G'day legends, welcome back to another episode, Young Nomad style of course, I hope you're well wherever you are in the universe and globe of course, and on this episode, as promised in my previous Far West Coast episode, which if you didn't watch, it's the one before this, get on there, have a look, cool adventures that took my brother and I over to the Far West Coast of South Australia for some uh, fishing, adventuring and uh, camping and all good things outdoors, but in that episode, I mentioned a little sneak hint about what our plans are in the coming weeks. So uh, for those that haven't seen the episode, uh, I'll let you know now, my family and I are within weeks of achieving our great Australian dream and aspiration of hitting, traveling, and working full-time on the road as we look to travel Australia. So in that last episode, I mentioned to you guys and girls, as the window closes to our departure date, I've got a fair bit of work still to do in preparation for that, but I was gonna share with you guys and girls behind the scenes the things that we're doing to prepare uh, our life, lifestyle, and van to uh, support us with traveling um, for that lifestyle on the road whilst working full time. For those that haven't already, if you haven't subscribed, please do, we absolutely admire and appreciate all your love and support. Hit the bell to make sure you get all the notifications when we put, put out new episodes. Um, and for those that continue to follow us, thank you again for your support. We uh, take incredible pride in doing what we do to share with you our learnings, um, our knowledge, our experiences, our fuck-ups, um, what we did well and what we haven't done so well. So hopefully, as I mentioned in the last episode, it gives you guys and girls some inspiration to get out there and explore our great country, irrespective of what's going on around the world and the environment that we're all in at the moment. So on this episode, um, I'm gonna to talk to you about how I'm setting the car caravan up uh, with 4G data connectivity whilst we are traveling on the road and still working full time. Um, so uh, I'm gonna share with you a little bit of the product that I'm about to install. I'm gonna share with you the install itself. Um, and I'm gonna to talk to you about why I decided to go this product now. I did a lot, of lot, a lot of research into this because obviously data, being able to access things, um, like emails, being online for my business and, and Mel's business was really important to us. Um, I put the self buy product on the 200 series Land Cruiser Sherman that we've got, cost me about 1500 um, bucks. Have I been super impressed with the product? Mm, it's okay, it's a pass mark. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's super beneficial in that if I'm in a 3G area, it will boost a bar or two. Um, you know, it definitely helps when you're in 4G area, that's a little bit weak signal. It will definitely increase your signal, no question about it. But again, when you're out of range, you're out of range. Um, it's not line of sight, obviously. Uh, the antenna on your car is obviously only governed by so much height. And the biggest thing with uh, range with mobile data is obviously the curvature of the earth. Um, that's the challenge. We're obviously at ground height, whereas a lot of the coverage can be, you know, hovering two, three, four, five, seven Ks above us. Um, so if we can get high up, obviously the greater the chance is for coverage. So you're gonna see what I'm doing to create more height, line of sight, what we're doing with our modem router in here internal, internally as well. Um, before I jump into that though, a little bit of background, I'm sitting in the caravan because it's bloody hot outside, it's humid here in Adelaide, um, but it's just great to have our van back. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we almost lost our van. Uh, there was a hailstorm here in Adelaide about June, July last year. Uh, we got hit really hard, as most people did. Fortunately, we were, we were able to salvage the van, but it was touch and go. There was $30,000 in total damage done to our van. We were right on the cusp of it being written off. John Walker from Walker Crash Repairs, big shout out to John. He was monumental in getting this repaired. Family owned business there on Churchill Road Prospect. Uh, did an incredible job. This van looks like it's come brand new out of the factory again. Uh, but just to give you an idea, John said to me of 15 vans that were going across his desk after those hailstorms, 14 of them were being written off. So we were one in 15 to get our um, repairs approved. Now, what we learned is we probably underinsured our van, absolutely. Uh, we didn't take into consideration COVID market. Things have gone up drastically. We took into consideration a little bit the upgrades that I've done, but probably 12 months ago, not what I've done since then. So lesson learnt. We've increased our premium. Uh, we were at 60,000 insurance. We've now gone to $85,000 of full cover uh, on-road and off-road and contents, obviously. But the big learning there was um, always be over-insured, always. 
uh, which I normally am. It's one of those things you forget to do because you're busy in today's world. But uh, a lesson is if your insurer is pushing back on you increasing your agreed value, because we're at agreed value, we're with SGIC. Now they're really easy to deal with. It costs us an extra $24 a month to go from 60 grand cover to 85 grand cover, so it's a no-brainer. Um, but if you get pushback, because I'm talking to a lot of people that have reached out to me and heard about our insurance story, they've had a lot of issues with insurers um, just writing things off quite easily because of salvageable prices at the moment. Uh, but a, I, a lesson that I learnt is you can actually go get an independent valuation. So here in South Australia, you've got um, Dave Benson's, uh, Benson's Caravans, you've got Noel's Caravans. Those guys can actually independently value your caravan. And whatever that valuation report reads independently, the insurer must honour it. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Um, but it's so good to have the caravan home, resetting it up. Uh, I've got a few little things. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about 4G and what we're doing there. Um, and then next episode, I'm doing a little upgrade to the awning of the Land Cruiser. And I'm going to share with you uh, the product that I'm going with and why, what research I've done to get what I think is the best awning for me. Uh, and our needs on there, um, it's, a, it's an Australian based product um, and uh, I think it's going to be an absolute ripper. So that'll be the next episode because the Land Cruiser is in getting how damage repairs right now as we speak. It's been a week. Wife's car has been detailed. We're about to sell it in preparation to hitting the road. Caravan just got back from how repairs and now the Land Cruiser is in, but it's only for a week. The, the damage on the Land Cruiser wasn't too bad, fortunately. So anyway, let's jump into it. So you can probably see over here. I've got a little box of goodies, all right? Now, remembering this technical side of things, I'm not the best at. My dad, the Foss, is a genius at this stuff, so um, lean on him for a lot of advice. So firstly, I'm gonna tell you, the people I dealt with are telco antennas in Queensland. These guys were great, uh, very on point with service, got back to me straight away, very supportive, easy to access and ask questions. So the first thing that I'm gonna point out that we went with was a galvanized drawbar mount, which I'll show you in a moment. And that drawbar mount has been specifically made for the 5.7 meter aluminium telescopic mast that comes with it. So it's a 5.7 meter telescopic aluminium mast that will extend up the product I'm gonna to talk to you about in a moment. Um, that was $341 for both of those, which I think was great value. All up guys, this cost to get set up and underway about 1400 bucks is what you need in a budget, right? If you wanna go down this path. The next thing that we got through Telco Antennas, and I'll drop their details down below uh, to their website, um, was the TS9 connector that you need for this Nighthawk wireless modem router, which I'll show you in a moment, okay? That part there is about 19 bucks. You can get it from JCAR, you can get it from these guys, but you need that uh, TS9 connector will need to come in from the connection point into your van, into the wireless modem router, which I'll show you shortly. The next product's a cool product. It's the RFI Wideband MIMO 3G, 4G, 5G panel antenna, 700 to 3800 megahertz uh, with a 10 meter cable as well. So this is what we're gonna be using for line of sight direction from the nearest tower. Uh, now the thing is with this, obviously if you're hundreds of Ks away from any tower, you're still not gonna get reception, right? Um, it can't create reception, but it most certainly will help increase reception. Uh, I did a lot of research with families traveling who have got these products and they found from sites they went to previously without this product, they had no range to then when they went up, they were getting anywhere from 10, 15 meg download and five to eight meg upload in really weak spots, which is pretty good, gives you enough to stream YouTube, Google Chrome and so forth. Um, that wideband uh, RFI was $297 through those guys. So I'll show you what that looks like firstly. So this is the RFI wideband 3G, 4G, 5G panel antenna. So that's it there. So you can see it will be mounted onto the mast line of sight. I've got all the brackets here as well. I'm gonna show you, I haven't mounted anything. I haven't even got it started. So I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to mount that. Um, these here are the TS9 cables, which you will need. I'll show you what that means in a moment and through the installation process. And there's a 10 metre cable as well. Now, obviously that will go on top of the mast. The mast will extend up 5.7 metres or thereabouts. And then it will be wired into this Nighthawk uh, M5 Netgear, good quality product Netgear, mobile router. So this is a 5G 
portable hotspot and fixed wireless modem router. In here, we're gonna be putting a 4G SIM card with Telstra, who we're with. Um, I don't think you can beat Telstra for coverage for pretty much anywhere around Australia. They're probably the strongest I find. Um, but you can see here, this will sit inside the caravan, right, with that TS9 connection cable that will come from the cable outside into the modem and will connect into the modem here inside. And then we can basically plug into this wirelessly. It's same as your wireless or uh, router at home that I'm sure you've got. You can wire wirelessly plug into it via your phone, your laptop, all of that. Uh, what we will be doing, you've got an ethernet port on these as well, okay? So we'll be plugging in an ethernet port. You can put it on a switch. So you can go from one ethernet port to maybe four ethernet ports. You can get a switch for about 50 bucks, 60 bucks from JB Hi-Fi's. And if you want, you can ethernet cable into a TV, a laptop, whatnot. Um, I've got a switch that I'll be taking with me, but I won't be using it, only if performance is affected because there's too many wireless products running off the wireless at the same time. As we all know, if you've got two phones, two laptops, TV running, a lot of data happening at the same time, it might be better to hardwire the product that needs the, the highest performance. So we'll take a switch with us for that reason in case we need it, but I'm gonna wirelessly plug in as much as possible. But what we'll run from here is we'll hardwire in the ethernet cable into the Google Chrome and the TV um, and everything else, our laptops, our phone, will just wirelessly plug into this. Now in this will be a 4G SIM card, okay? And we've got a 400 gig data plan um, with Telstra that's gonna be accessible by anybody who's accessing this wireless modem, obviously via a code, pin code. Um, and then that will just be shared 400 gigs a month. Hopefully it's enough, um, should be. We're not going anywhere near that at home with our data usage. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what it looks like. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get underway. Um, I'll jump outside and I'll show you what the mask looks like. I'll show you what the um, galvanized drawbar mount looks like as well. Um, and then what I'm gonna be doing as we hit the road is I'll share with you guys an overall review and performance. Now they say that you should be able to wirelessly get activity 100 meters from that Nighthawk router from the caravan, obviously depending on structure. So if you've got a lot of trees, you know, obviously you might not get it 100 meters coverage from the van. Um, I'm gonna hard mount this into the van. It's got a spot, it's gonna sat, um, stay above my satellite box in here, so it's permanently mounted. And then all I have to do is put up the mass into the galvanized draw mount each time we um, relocate and set up. And then I just plug the cable. I've already got an external um, cable ready to go. Uh, on the outside, so I've got two plugs. One will be for my satellite dish, the second one will be for this uh, RFI antenna, and then that's already running into over here where you see it plug into the router, which I'll show you in a moment. Anyway, let's jump outside. It's bloody hot, but this is a commitment I got for you guys and girls to share with you my knowledge, my experience, my learning. So uh, learn from my pain. All right, let's jump outside. All right, legends, I'm here outside, and uh, as you can see, I've got the mast and the draw bar mount there. But before I jump into that, I'd love to hear from you. Drop it in the comments, tell me what you think. I don't know if you can notice a change to the van here since we had the insurance job done, but our van, a 2017 Oasis Island Star 24 foot family bunk van. And in that era, obviously, the um, rippled effect, aluminium compressed sheets uh, was fairly much the standard run of the mill back then. This stuff is only 0.6 or 0.7 mil in thickness, so hence any hail hitting that, it was inevitable, the carnage. This thing looked like it went through World War II. It got hit across all the front, all the top, this side. The other side and the back didn't get hit, unfortunately. Um, but because all these sheets interlink, uh, we had to do the whole back, even though the back was fine, except for the sheet that curves from the back onto the top. That back alone was just under five grand, apparently. So anyway, this has all been reskinned, and uh, she's like new, absolute mint. Um, but I want you, your feedback in your comments, tell us what you think. We've just modernized the front with that um, fresh sort of flat flushing on finish on the front, which obviously newer vans typically and standard come with. Um, we tried to do the back, but unfortunately we ran out of insurance funds to do that. Would have been nice um, just to modernize the back like the front as well, but I think it looks cool. Um, and we got it done quicker because this product is more common, easier to get in. This stuff takes longer. Decals are all back on, point perfect. Anyway, let's jump into it. I'll show you the galvanized mount. So you can see here, that's where the galvanized mount goes. We've got it going in between our gas bottles. Comes with galvanized mount, which has got the handle so you can swivel it either side, but obviously we've got no room, so it'll just sit there permanently for us. Um, comes with the gal 
plate as well, all your bolts and washers. In saying that though, I'm gonna nylon nut these uh, because of corrugation, just to make sure they don't rattle off. There's aluminium mass, so 5.7 meters in total. I haven't got it completely fixed yet because I'm gonna to have to move this over because of our bike rack holder. Um, so I've just temporarily put it in there, but you know, essentially that will extend up 5.7 meters and that's where that, um, that wide band um, antenna will sit on top of that. Cable will run down. I'll zippy tie it, run it in under the van here. That's so nicely tucked away. And then it'll come to these points. I think they're RJ points from memory. I always get these ones wrong. So we've got point one here, which will run our satellite dish when we're off grid. And point two is where that 10 meter cable that comes off the antenna will plug into. And then obviously this routes back inside, which I'll show you when we get to that as part of the install as well. Um, this mask, super, super cool. I've seen a lot of masks. I've seen people use everything from paint extenders, but it just feels really stolid and sturdy. But I like how it's got all these interlocking. Uh, so it's three piece in total. So 5.7 meters divided by three, obviously. And to unlock each section of the pole, you just unscrew that, unlocks the next section, unlock the top one, and it extends out uh, the top section. So it's all in interlockable so once you get it to the height you want bang you lock it in job's done all right let's get back into it we're running out of light as always never enough time in the day as our window closes um, whilst i'm still working away um, but we're going to get the antenna on top of that mounted ready to go cabling pretty much ready to go inside modem router ready to go and uh, the only thing the gal uh, the gal mount i can't hard fix because Land cruisers in getting repairs, and guess where all my tools are? So I've got limited tools in the shed. I've actually got more useful tools in my Land Cruiser for when we are on the road, more so than in my shed. So I might have to talk to the wife about that. I might have to buy two sets to replicate everything of what I've got in the, car in the Land Cruiser into the shed. Don't know how that'll go down though. Gents, you can only ask so, right? Yeah? All right, here, here we go, let's jump into it. Okay, folks, I've wired up, uh, or sorry, I should say mounted up the, um, wideband antenna so i'm just going to show you the brackets it's very straightforward um, it comes with four bolts in the back here this particular piece slides up in then there's two little plastic um, knobs that it just sits into um, and flushes it and then you mount this plate over the top to hold it in place and then you've got uh, obviously this bracket here this u-bolt which comes with m6 nylon nuts underneath there and that obviously you can adjust to slide up and down accordingly. Now I've just finger tight that on, so I'm hoping it will hold, um, but that's pretty much it. Now, one recommendation I'd always recommend is nylon nuts, everything. As you can see, nylon nuts on that, nylon nuts on the lights, everything nylon nut it, because with corrugation, as you know, things will rattle, things will move, but essentially, this will go up and hopefully, I'm doing this one handed, not easy, you get the gist. So that's just did in there, just softly, <laughs> but you get the idea, you get the concept of what it looks like, line of sight, wide band antenna there and obviously that can go up another one and a half lengths one and three quarter lengths above that again as well so plenty of height and then this cabling i'll just tuck in under here mount it on the side there we'll jump inside we're running out of light outside so we'll jump inside and uh, finish off the nighthawk wireless modem router inside and uh, let's see what sort of connectivity we get okay folks we're back in the van um, so I'm just going to show you uh, inside the setup. So you can see here this cupboard is my naughty bird's nest cupboard. It's kind of where all the electrical stuff sits. So we've got uh, 2240 points there. We've got uh, circuit breakers for aircon, GPOs, inlet, uh, inverter switch as well, which takes us from mains and hot water, or we could flick it on to off or onto the inverter, which converts everything from 12 volt to 240. Um, our van has got the hot water switch up there for the gas and mains as well. So we've got a 28 litre tank hot water, I believe. But obviously if you flick on just the gas, it takes about 25 minutes to heat up. But if we flick it onto 
uh, gas and electric. Um, yeah, it obviously speeds it up. And then the 12, uh, 12 volt water pump there as well. We've got our antenna plug, um, but essentially here, you'll see, and I'm just trying to squeeze in through here, so just bear with me because it's a bit of a tight spot. This is our TV, Sat King TV. Uh, we've got our Sat King satellite um, receiver here as well. And this is the Telstra Netgear wireless modem router that sits there. So we've got the 240 that's running up into here. Alrighty, um, pretty cool. One tip, uh, Scott from Telstra shop. Thanks mate for all your help. He's been um, absolute legend. If you need any Telstra support, he's your go-to guy. Uh, I've taken the battery off because we're gonna be running off uh, 240 or 12 volt all the time pretty much. So um, obviously uh, leaving batteries in constantly on charge, things can expand, get hot and explode and we don't want that. Um, but this is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. I've just activated the SIM card. It's simply plug and play underneath. Um, once you get in there, you just set up your, uh, um, you can use the admin credentials obviously underneath the modem, or you can set up your um, ideal and preferred personal username and password, which we've done, obviously highly recommendable. Um, it shows you we've used 0.14 gig of 400 gigs. Uh, we've got one device connected so far, which is my phone. We're on 5G at the moment as well. 10 days left, I don't know what that is. Um, till the data resets, because I've only just activated this plan, so I would have thought there'll be 30 days, but that's all right. I'll uh, ring the big guy, Scott, from Telstra tomorrow to find out exactly what that entails. But yeah, this is all touch screen. So if you go to home, oops, sorry, swap to unlock, you've got all your Wi-Fi credentials, you can select uh, 2.4 hertz or five hertz as well. Um, you've got your bandwidth, which you can select obviously like the prize screen. Uh, you can go dual band, which is um, default setting on this one. Uh, devices, shows you which devices obviously connected. Um, Oh, WS allows you to activate devices that support this feature to securely connect to your mobile router without Wi-Fi passwords. I'm not going to be worried about that. And then just options with saving power, standby mode, Wi-Fi range, long. Should I didn't click into this? Yeah, long, short. Um, so that's all good to go. Now, um, so you can see here I've got uh, one antenna receiver for satellite. Okay, so that's for when I'm running my satellite, I can plug in. At the moment, I've just got the um, AUX or RF, sorry, I should say, for the antenna on top. Uh, if we don't get good reception and I plug in the Sat King, that snaps straight into there, okay? And this is that point number two from outside that will clip into the modem in here. And this is where you need one of these adapters, SMA to TS9. Okay, because these have a little plug out the back here. And you've got to be really careful of these because these pins are so fine. So just be super cautious because very fragile. But anyway, you just peel one of those things back and in there there's a little pin that the TS9 will mount to. And voila, that'll all be connected. Okay, but that's the TS9 plug there. Um, I'll poke it through the packaging to see if you can. That's how fine it is. Very, very fine. And then that obviously, let me grab it out of the packet for you folks. Sorry, I'm hot and I'm flustered. It's disgusting here. So yeah, that's the TS9 plug that goes into the back of the modem there. And then this is what will screw into that point there connecting the modem from the inside outside I just did a um, ping test and obviously we're in suburbia at the moment um, and the antenna is not even plugged in so I'll do some diagnostics with that obviously it's hard because we're in full range at the moment you know we're in suburbia um, but I tell you what the ping tests were pretty impressive let's have a look 206 megabits download 41 0.9 megs upload. That's probably better than my MBN I'm getting inside. For those that uh, don't believe me or critically don't dislike Telstra, there you go. There it is for yourself. Um, but I'll have to run some tests, obviously, when we're a bit more remote, not in suburbia. So stay tuned. I'll keep you updated on the progress of that um, and how we go doing it remotely. 
And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions about this, guys, always drop us a question. I'd love to hear from you, mums, dads. If you're traveling, I know how important it is to be able to watch Netflix or Google Chrome or YouTube for the kids or whatever it might be. Well, this is a highly recommendable solution to your data issues when you're traveling on the road. Obviously, it's pretty overkill. You know, you're talking 14, 1500 bucks, but when you're gonna be living on the road full time as much as we do, not even that though too, like just when you travel, being able to do it super, super comfortable, almost like you're still at home in your beloved home on wheels though. Um, we do go to the extreme. We try to make ourselves as comfortable as possible when we're on the road because the more comfortable you are, the more enjoyable the trip is and the more time you can spend off grid out in remote places and ideally getting away from the hustle and bustle. But yeah, there's a bit of capital that's required up front. 14, 1500 bucks on this, 1500 bucks on the cell fire on uh, the Land Cruiser. So far, this is knocking it out the absolute ballpark. Thanks for tuning in to another episode, Young Nomads uh, style, of course. And uh, until the next episode, keep safe, keep well, and thanks for tuning in for now. Bye for now, legends. All right, so the Nighthawk is fully operational, plugged in. We are playing and underway, and I've just done a speed test, so, so I thought I'd share with you guys and girls the difference in the speed that we've achieved. Now, keep in mind, I'm still parked up in the caravan in our front driveway, so we are in 5G territory. However, I did do a speed test comparison. Obviously, the wideband antenna is 4G only. However, the Nighthawk modem wireless router M5 is a 5G product. So obviously when you're in the city and you've got the potential to run 5G, you can just run off the modem without the need for the uh, wideband antenna, obviously. Obviously when you're out in the sticks, a bit more rural where 5G isn't as prominent, flip it to 4G. Um, but I'll let you know, I've been super impressed with these speeds. In fact, these speeds are quicker than what I'm getting NBN inside the house. Uh, my provider for NBN inside the house will remain nameless. This is Telstra, which I don't think you can beat when it comes to 5G technology. So firstly, when we're just running off the modem itself without the uh, antenna being plugged in, um, 5G, we were getting 246.2 megabits download. That's right, 247.2 Mbps download. 19 point up, uh, 19.8 megabits upload. So far superior, obviously, with downloads on 5G. Uploads were actually better on 4G. So I'll just show you there the screenshot so you can see for yourself. That is the speed test that I've just carried out on my phone. Um, when you go to 4G, we're 97.9 megabits download. So 247 megabits download for 5G versus 4G 97 megabits. However, the upload far superior on 4G. 81 megabits per second upload on the 4G versus 5G 19.8. But either way, you'd have to agree folks, they are some phenomenal speed. There's the speed test of the 4G. And uh, yeah, happy days. Um, super impressed by that. I'll just show you, this is the Oz Phone Towers app that we can use. So it's just like using your um, Google Maps as such. So if you come into you know, our area as such, I've just got it selected on all the Telstra, um, all the Telstra towers closest to me. So it's showing here my location. This tower up here has probably the strongest signal right now. I can actually click on that. It shows me that it's a Telstra tower and it shows me all the performance relative to that relevant to that tower so pretty straightforward simple line of sight use the app 4g 5g even the 4g i'm getting quicker speeds than what i'm getting in mbn inside so highly rate it if you've got any questions or comments drop them down below love to always hear from you as always